It's time to get back to normal, get into the routine. I'm back at my desk getting ready for uh, a new week after 10 days of vacation. It's Thursday the 23rd of April and it's good to be back. Hi Brian and friends. But what routine? What normal? Everything is so different. Over the break, there's been lots of time for reflection as we've prepared the garden, digging and weeding and uh, raking. Uh, evenings of music and storytelling, laughter, some tears and tension too, because these are strange times. And underneath uh, the what seems like normality, there is this knowledge that this is not Christmas break, this is not summer break, that we should not all be confined to our homes like this. Something fundamental has changed. And over these 10 days, I've been reading through Ezekiel. <clears throat> My first sermon was from Ezekiel chapter 34, and I've never had the courage to listen to the cassette tape of that sermon uh, for fear of uh, the ignorance that I would find. I found uh, Ezekiel always to be fascinating, but also somewhat mystifying, maybe even frightening. Ezekiel provides us with those wonderful musical pieces. Um, Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. And the big wheel ran by faith. And the little wheel ran by the grace of God. It's a wheel in a wheel way up in the middle of the air. And then, of course, Ezekiel 37. Dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones, dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones, dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones. Now hear the word of the Lord. And Ezekiel not only proclaims the word of the Lord, he encounters God's glory, God's spirit, and performs the word of the Lord, sometimes in extremely strange and odd ways, so much so that you would think he was mad, like lying down on one side for 390 days to represent the exile of the northern kingdom, and uh, then for 40 days on the other side to represent the exile of the southern kingdom of Judah. As we move through Ezekiel, we find that his, his anger uh, is focused on those who use and abuse religion for the purposes of oppressing uh, the people of God. The shepherds, the rulers, use their power and they use religion in order to oppress the sheep, to take away their land, to uh, cheat them uh, with unjust scales. Ezekiel's angry about this, and we find that he speaks a difficult word as the nations are sent to correct uh, Israel and Judah, but then they too become arrogant, and the Lord has to put them in their place. The whole of Ezekiel is in concerned with the glory of the Lord, even when the Lord brings the people of Israel back, it's not for their sakes, it's for his glory. And then the picture of this new temple, not a physical temple, the portrayal of the sacrifices, not physical sacrifices, but a new indwelling of God in the midst of right directed worship towards the Lord, a river that flows from the temple with trees on either side. The fruit uh, is there uh, in order to provide food and the leaves are for the healing of the nations. This river teems with life and then uh, the tribes of Israel are all given equal allotments of land. Those who have been dispossessed now find a place again in the community. And then there are gates on the north, east, west and south of this city, this new city, 
there are three gates on each side to allow equal access for all the tribes of Israel. And the final words of Ezekiel. For all time to come, the city's name will be the Lord is there. Ezekiel uses the familiar images of temple, of city, of sacrifice. He uses these images to begin to imagine beyond the abuses of those institutions. To imagine beyond into something that is new, something that transcends, but also is very deeply embed embedded in everyday life in the community. And I wonder... What are the institutions that we need to reimagine? This never getting back to the routine or the normal. We will never recover what we had before. We are going to have to live differently. We will have to. But how will we reconfigure our um, banking system, our way of governance, our way of thinking about ourselves as members of the, the world? I've noticed that there are no, uh, no one sleeping rough on the street or very few are sleeping rough on the streets in Cheltenham. And I know that this is, is probably the case elsewhere. Reading about in the newspaper, the uh, danger to public health uh, of homelessness is that the, it will increase the spread of COVID-19. Isn't it remarkable that now the homeless are being placed uh, in hotels? We can do it. Isn't it remarkable that we are able to support uh, those in our community who need it? We can do it. But we have to reimagine how we are going to live our lives, what kind of holidays we're going to have, how we're going to work, how we're going to move about. And the question is, with Ezekiel, he reimagines a city whose name will come to be known as the Lord is there. How will we find that the Lord is there in our cities and towns and villages and rural communities? I don't know that I have the answers to that. But I do know that we need to think differently. I've been reading, uh, well, I finished reading the number one ladies detective agency. Uh, I know it's old hat for many of you, um, but I've been struck by the way in which we're experiencing this COVID-19 crisis uh, in a visceral kind of way. It's causing huge problems in our own society. And yet, what about the people of Yemen? What about the, the countries in Africa uh, what about those uh, who do not have the kinds of resources that we uh, in the first world have? The Lord is there. How do we experience that as a reality rather than just preserving ourselves, looking after ourselves? Mama Ramatswe is the, the detective and she uh, brings a kidnapped child back to his father, who is a head teacher. She has lost an infant child in tragic circumstances um, as the consequence of domestic violence. I'm just going to read you the reunion and her own thoughts. She turned to the van and signaled to the child within. The door opened and his son came out and the teacher cried out and ran forward and stopped and looked at Mama Ramatswe as if for confirmation. She nodded and he ran forward again, almost stumbling, an unlaced shoe coming off to seize his son and hold him while he shouted wildly, incoherently for the village and the world to hear his joy. Mama Ramatswe walked back towards her van, not wanting to intrude upon the intimate moments of reunion. She was crying for her own child too, remembering the minute hand that had grasped her own. 
so briefly. While it tried to hold on to a strange world that was slipping away so quickly, there was so much suffering in Africa that it was tempting just to shrug your shoulders and walk away. But you can't do that, she thought. You just can't. Lord, help us not to turn away. We bring to your own troubles, our own difficulties, our own challenges. But we pray for the the insight of prophets like Ezekiel, the vision to be able to see the injustices that remain in our world, for the impact of this virus on vulnerable war-torn communities, communities that do not have the economic resources to combat COVID. Oh Lord, Give us the vision to be able to imagine the world beyond the way things are to the way things might be. May you give us the courage to stop longing for a return to the normal, where homelessness was an accepted part of our society. where low-paid work was acceptable in our society. May we imagine and hope and dream of a better day, of a new city that is called by a new name. The Lord is there. And so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.